Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, this is Tony Day. Today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to create your own uh, reference LUT for your Blackmagic Pocket 4K or 6K and you can actually use this for a lot of different cameras. This LUT is, uh, this LUT is really more for using as a reference LUT for your camera, which I know some people have been having a hard time with when it comes to ACES. So I'm hoping that this will help you uh, with any of your uh, issues. All right, so um, what we're gonna do first, I'm gonna show you how my project is. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to get into ACES and DaVinci Resolve. The thing is that in order for this uh, to work for creating a LUT, you need to be working in uh, DaVinci Wire GB for the color science. You cannot be doing it in this way um, if you can do it this way and create a proper LUT for it, then I am not aware of how to do it properly. Uh, the only way I know to create a LUT properly for what we're going to be doing is by using DaVinci YRGB. No color managed uh, stuff going under the hood. Okay. Now the Pocket 4K does not have a uh, input device transform. So what we need to do, and uh, this is uh, clear if you've seen my other videos on this, um, if you have a camera that does not have a proper uh, IDT, an ACES input device transform, you need to transform that uh, color science into a different color space that does have an IDT in order for this to work properly. So I'm going to throw down a few nodes here. We're going to do four. Uh, one, two, three, four. First one we're going to call CST. Next one we're going to call ACES in. Um, I used to call it IDT, but I don't want people to get confused on things, so we'll just call it aces in and aces out, so you guys understand. And here, we're just going to call this grade, okay? I'm going to put this over here. So here, we're going to throw in a color space transform node. Uh, and I'll show you the reason why by using this aces transform. We'll put one in there and one in there. So when we go to input transform we need to pick the proper camera color science and if we go to black magic design there's no uh, pocket 4k there's no v4 uh, color science really available in here so we need to choose something else now i pick red uh wide gamut log 3g10 because it there's only one of these to choose and it works uh, uh, pretty fine. Um, I've used this one. I've also used the Panasonic V35, but the red wide gamut, since it has a wider color gamut and all those things, uh, I would rather use that. So it's just what I'm used to. Um, so we're gonna choose that for input device transform. For the output, we're gonna pick ACES CC. You can pick CCT if you want, but I use CC, okay? For the ACES out, we're gonna go ACES CC and we're gonna go into Rec 709, okay? Uh, so this doesn't look right, obviously, and that's because we're not uh, going into red. So we're gonna use this to go from the Pocket 4K on both, okay? Blackmagic uh, Gen 4, Pocket 4K Gen 4 on the input color space and the input gamma. The output, we're gonna go to red, wide gamut, RGB. Gamma is gonna be red, log 3G10, and now you can see the transform is being done properly. You see that? Okay. So this is just the uh, basic transform that will happen. Okay. Now, um, here is where you would do whatever looks or grading that you want to do. Okay. So this is just the regular transform. Some people, they just want the transform and to just throw that into their camera. Okay. But if you want to generate certain looks or whatever it is you want to do, you can do the grade in here, okay? And I'll show you real quick um, an example of when you might want to do that. Okay, so in this shot, um, as you can see, this is, uh, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, sample footage from Blackmagic Design, this is one of the ones that was uh, shot when the camera was released, uh, for the Pocket 4K, that is. And... Um, in this one, since it, it looks like they're using some yellow lights off here, her skin is kind of this yellow that uh, I don't really like. So if if uh, I was shooting in this kind of situation where I knew that there was an issue with the lighting here, I might um, do a grade to tweak her skin tones. So just to do that real quick. Okay. So let's say that I just wanted to make sure that skin tones, when they had this particular light for, you know, that day on set or whatever it was that we knew we were going to do, whatever this look is, 
um, that we did that. And you know, let's say if I wanted to do different grade, let's say I wanted the uh, if I wanted the blues to be more cyan, I could you know grab the blues and do that. Okay. So if that's something you want to do, you want to do a grade or you want to do a specific look, you want to do it in between these two notes. Okay. Now the way that you output this is very simple. I'll go to clips here, click on this, then I'll right click the uh, thumbnail and then I'll go to generate 3D LUT. Okay. So I will call this, uh, this will be sample aces LUT. Okay. And then what we're going to do is just check that, uh, this LUT was loaded. So I'm going to open up the folder, go into here, sample aces LUT. It usually has all this crap on the end, but, um, this is just, you know, just showing you it's there. So then we will update lists. Save. And then go into our LUTs. I'll go into day LUT. And sample is here. So I'll just create a node to check to make sure that this works. Okay. And there it is. So you can see that the LUT actually does in fact work. Okay. And we'll just, you know, just to show you, okay, it's the uh, same look. Okay. The LUT works great, and this kind of workflow is fine in ACES until you get into situations where you have gamut clipping issues. And I will show this right now with this shot. And I strongly suggest doing this on your own to see what the kind of limitations uh, ACES is going to have as far as the gamut clipping issues with your camera. It doesn't matter if it's a pocket 4K, 6K, uh, whatever camera you've got, you want to make sure you're not going to have issues. And there have been issues like this with other cameras. So I'm going to turn on this little node here. Uh, all I did was pull the saturation all the way down to zero, and you can see all this, you know, black uh, clipping in here. When this happens, when you turn the saturation to zero, and this is going on, you know there's a gamut issue, okay? So we're going to solve that problem with our LUT, okay? And in order to do this, uh, we will just turn this one off for now. We're going to create two nodes after the ACE is in node. Go like that. This one is going to be called LMT. This one is going to be called ACES CC. We're going to solve this problem with the LMT neon suppression. You could do this manually if you want, but I'm not going to, okay? Because this pretty much does the, uh, it, it fixes the problem for us. So with this uh, ACES in, we need to change the output though to ACES in order for it to work because this is created for the ACES color space, not ACES CC or CCT. So go to ACES. In this node, we'll throw in this suppression uh, LMT. Here, we will go from ACES into ACES CC. And now, when we turn this node on, you can see that the gamut issue has now been solved. Okay? So this is kind of a bit of work to get that gamut issue not like occurring, but uh, this does solve the problem, okay? You will notice that there is uh, a difference in the way that the colors are represented on some of the clipped values, and you'll see that blues, for example, will be pushed a little bit more toward the cyan, and uh, other colors can kind of look slightly, slightly different, but skin tones don't look like they are affected very much. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to copy this just so we have the same skin tone look, okay? And we are going to do the same procedure and uh, save out a lookup table for this because when we're monitoring, we don't want to see horrible clipped values, right? So I'll go here. I will generate a 3D LUT just like we did before. This one will be called the same thing except for we'll call it, um, we'll call it uh, sample aces let uh, neon sub. Okay, we'll go in, open the let folder, make sure everything's saved out. Okay, there it is. And then we will update our lists so that we can check to be sure that the let saved out. 
hit save. We'll create a node for uh, checking this out. Go to our LUTs, daylut. Go to this one, throw it in. And as you can see, let's make this a little bit bigger so that you can see. When we go back and forth between the two, you can see that it looks the same. Okay? See that? Okay. Now, um, let's just make sure that what I said before is accurate. So we'll go here. Here's our um, shot before, right? So we'll uh, clear all this out. And I'll throw down the LUT. Okay. And there it is. Okay, so the skin tones, even with the uh, the neon suppression, uh, the skin tones don't get horribly affected or anything. It's usually like the colors that do get uh, hit with that gamut clipping issue are the ones that might be tweaked one way or the other. Okay, so just check it with your stuff. When I use this with a color card um, and with skin tones, usually the skin tones look perfectly fine. Okay, so this is an easy way if you want to just throw in a LUT for um, an ACES conversion. I don't know why you'd want to do that. If you're doing ACES workflow, you should just be doing it properly in post. But these LUTs will be uh, usable so you can reference them in your Blackmagic Pocket 4K or 6K or whatever camera that you might have that can uh, import LUTs. Okay, so I hope that this helped you out. I hope that uh, you will have some success with this. I know that there has been some issues with people not being able to... Um, get uh, ACES lookup tables put into their cameras, and we're struggling with that. So I'm hoping that this will help people with getting a good uh, reference uh, for shooting uh, for ACES. All right, so uh, catch y'all later, and uh, let me know if you got any questions below. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like this content and uh, would like to see more of it, and I will catch you later.